Alright, so time for us to do the next tutorial, which is radical expression. So uh, we've already done radicals and exponents. So now we're going to talk about how we're going to solve and simplify radical expressions. So, and the one thing to note is an expression is when we don't have the equal sign. So it's just simplifying. We're not solving for anything because it's an expression, not an equation. So the objective for this lesson is to rewrite numerical radical expressions involving square roots. So now we're going to rewrite these. So in essence, we're simplifying it as much as we can. And a lot of time when we think of square roots, we think of um, having an exact answer, having a decimal answer if it's not a perfect square. So one thing that will help us in knowing square roots is knowing our squares. So what is 6 squared? What is 6 times 6, in other words? Um, I'm sure you guys probably saw it flash before I put uh, not answered. Um, this is going to be 36. Now, 8 times 8. So 8 times 8 is 64. And if you guys like don't have these memorized, it just comes with practice. I just have them memorized. Uh, 15 times 15, um, it's 225. Literally, the only reason why I have that memorized is it was in an episode of Batman Beyond. Um, otherwise, um, I wouldn't memorize my squares that high. I don't even know what 14 times 14 is. Um, so let's get into this. So the idea of perfect squares literally come from a square. A square has an equal length and width. So the reason why we call them squares is instead of calling it length times width, we just call it the side squared. And that's going to be your filled in area. So in this picture, you see that it's six by six. And if we counted all of them, there would be 36 squares inside there. There are six squares in the area. So let's talk about square roots. So square roots are literally just instead of squaring something, you're doing the exact opposite. You're breaking it up into two perfect squares, meaning that if you take the square root, it's going to give you an integer. It's going to give you a whole number. A re ready can't is the number inside the squared. I honestly should use this word a lot more because I'm always like, oh, the number inside. Uh, but the number inside is called a ready can't. So going into this. So what number times the other number gives us uh, this? So um there's actually posters of it um i know miss anushi she has one on her wall where it shows the perfect squares it's like one squared is one times one is one two squared two times two is four three squared um it's a good idea to get yourself familiar with these especially because when we're dealing with polynomials in algebra two you're going to be dealing with a lot of quadratics a lot of squared so it's useful to kind of know these so 16 is the same thing as four times four so we're going to say the square root of 16 is four uh 49 i just have this memorized um it is seven uh 289. Now, I don't have this memorized, but I'm going to guess that it is 13. Now, the reason why I'm guessing this is because it ends in the 9. And if you multiply 13, 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 1 is 3. Uh, 1 times 3 is 3. And then 1 times 1 is 1. So I was a little off. Little off. I'm very off. <laughs> uh, that's only 169. So I know it's not 23. So at this point, I'm at a loss. So I know it's higher than 13. So I can try all kinds of other numbers. Um, and I do have little tricks to make this easier, but unfortunately, that's not going to work. So we have to think of two numbers that would give us a 9. My best guess was that 3. That didn't work out. But guess what? This is another number that gives us a number that ends in 9 is 7.
what if I tried 17? Let's try 17. So 7 times 7 is 49. Uh, 7 times 1 is 7. Plus that 4 is going to give us 11. Then it's 7 times 1, which is 7. And then 7, we don't need this 4 anymore. Uh, 1 times 1 is 1. If we add these together, we get the 289. So there are little tricks you can do to kind of simplify it. I tried that uh, 13, didn't work out. It doesn't mean I got it wrong. It's just one less number I have to try now. And then I was like, wait, I remembered the 49. So that's why I tried the 7. Oops. Uh, didn't want to use that feature, but it's cool to know that you guys can see me. Uh, having this on would be a little weird because the camera is on my left monitor, not my right monitor, which is where I'm writing all this. Uh, let's see here. Let me erase all this. So all of this should be good to go. Ooh, what happened there? What? Oh, pff. I put 289 instead of 17. Whoops. Try that again. So 4. 7 and 17. There we go. <laughs> All right, going into the next one. So if we go into this one, why is this not erasing? Oh, no. Oh, because I used a different type of pen for it. There we go. Let me get rid of this pen so that doesn't happen again. There we go. So we can also add two perfect squares, um, but we have to square them first, obviously. So let's talk about this. So if we think about this, um, we can think about the square root of 18 is the same thing as saying the square root of 9 times 2. Well, we can split up that 9 times 2 into square root of 9 times the square root of 2. This is a trick they use, but it involves knowing your perfect squares a lot. I like using the division one, and it's kind of the same thing because what we would do is we would break this 18 up into 9 and 2, and then I would break this up into 3 and 3. Now, square root means it's times the same number. So 3 times 3 times 2 gives us 18, or in other words, I can say a pair of 3s, this goes on the outside, and that 2 will stay on the inside. So couples go outside, this single guy, he's going to stay inside. So moving on into the next one, oops, let me erase all this. So if you look at this, here is 18, and what's happening here is we're doing this 3 times square root of 3, and that'll give us a perfect 18. Now, the reason why it doesn't look all nice is because, well, there's no way you can get a perfect square root 18. You can get a perfect square root 16. That way, that's why you see this black line cutting through some of those other blocks. But this is the closest you can to get a perfect square of 18. All right, and moving on to the next one. Let's see if I can unanswer it fast enough. I think I did. Um, but what you're going to do here is you're going to grab this pen and start writing down on here. It's a little hard for you guys, but what I would do is try the best with the mouse. Um, if you're having problems with clicking and dragging, what I recommend is click with one pen. Use one hand to click, use the other hand to drag if you guys are using a touchpad on your Chromebook or laptop. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to break this up into four and three. And I'm going to show you how this trick works. Uh, even My trick works even better than knowing that this is a perfect four. So obviously, I did do a perfect four, so that makes it a little easier. But let's pretend I didn't. Let's say I'm like 12. Well, that's the same thing as 2 times 6. Well, if you notice, neither of these is a perfect root. So 
I have to break, I can break up the six though. So I'm going to break up the six into two and three. And I'm like, whoa, I have this pair of twos. Granted, they're not part of the same number, but that's why you see me uh, crossing out the numbers I break up into two factors. So I'm still going to get the two on the outside, and that single three is going to stay on that inside. And then I can submit this. They use the squares to kind of resemble it. Um, it's kind of weird for me to see it that way. But what they're doing here is they're drawing. They're like, oh, we can do a four, a two by two, and we have it three times. So that's why uh, we can break this up into a side of two, a side of two, and three on the outside. It's clever, but that involves a lot of drawing. I prefer just breaking it up like this. Um, but if you do want to do that, it's a really nifty trick. And if I did... Let's say I try to go over and I did the three by three. Three, oh, that's four, oof. That's probably another reason why I don't like doing this. So let's say I had a square and I did it as a three by three. If I did another three by three, I'm already at 18 squared. That's already too much. So by default, I have to use the two by twos and it's like oh wait two by twos again this is clever but what happens when you get weird numbers so um I, I i like this this is very creative and i think this would be really good if we had little blocks instead of having to draw it out so this is what I was talking about factorization prime factorization is breaking this up into their factors now if you don't know, um, I feel like we use that word factor a lot in Algebra 2 and we never revisit it. You're going to be hearing the word factor a lot in Algebra 2. Um, so a factor is a number that gets multiplied by another number to make a product. So two factors make a product. Two or more factors because you multiply more than once. So what's happening here is we're taking this 96 and like, oh, uh, I'm going to divide it by 2. I'm going to divide that by 2. And I get all of this stuff. So another way for me to write this is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Whew, times 2 times 3. A lot of 2s there. As you can see, I got tired in the middle of saying it. Um, but we can change that into 2 squared times 2 squared, which is 4 times 4 and so on and so forth. So there's a bunch of these little tricks we can do to make this a lot easier. And the beauty of this is, is because square roots is dealing with factors, you can do the factors in any way. So right here, I see that I have a pair of fours. I could have just pulled that out, but let's pretend I didn't. And I was like, oh, well, uh, what's the square root of four? Two times the square root of four, which is also two. Or it could have been like this. I'm like, I have a pair of twos and another pair of twos. That means two times two. Or let me circle that with my pen. That probably sounds a little weird just listening to it. So I'm like, oh, I have a pair of twos and another pair of twos. So that becomes a two times two. So that's another way of thinking about it. So prime factorization, doing the little factor tree, is really useful in solving square roots. So let's see if we can solve some of these. We're going to do this using our little factor tree. I hate when it doesn't let me do this. You guys should be able to, but sometimes um, when I'm in the teacher mode, it doesn't let me answer it. Oh, okay. I have to go to unanswered, apparently. Duh. So square root of 24. This I'm going to break down into, let's say I break it down into 4 and 6. I'm going to make it easy on myself. Oh, look at that. 4 is a perfect root. So this can turn into 2 and then square root of 6 because I cannot take the square root of 6. Again, let's say I did not know this and I was like, I'm going to break it down into 2 and 12. This will break down into 2 and 6. And right off the back there, I'm like, oh, look, a pair of 2s. The couple is going to go on the outside. If I break down the six, which I can do, I'm just wasn't choosing to. Oops, probably a good thing I didn't because apparently 
I mix that up a little bit. Where's the eraser on this? Oh, I guess I can just click undo. I wish there was an eraser though. Um, huh, there's no eraser on here. Be very careful guys, cause that's a little weird. I guess what you can do is also select what you're writing and delete that. But okay, so this goes nowhere. So it's still gonna be two square root of six. All right, and the next one, whoops. What's the prime factorization of this? So as we saw when I did this, I got two, 12, two, six, two, three. So I got two to the third power or two times two times two. And then I'm also gonna multiply that by the three. All right, and then here's the little factor tree. All right, moving on to the next one. Compare your answers in part A and part B. Cool. Well, what are the connections? Um, the pairs, I call them couples, because the couples go outside, singles stay inside. The pairs um, uh, go outside of the square root while unpaired factors and I know that sounds fancy but it really isn't it's just factors we're doing a factor tree so the numbers that aren't paired so unpaired factors while the unpaired factors stay inside and with the way the world is, I'm sure a lot of us feel the same way of being stuck inside. All right, so evaluation. Um, again, this is just reflect. Just reflect on what you're thinking. Like, if you have no idea what you're doing, um, try to think a little bit more. Saying that you don't know anything isn't going to help you learn. Going I don't understand how he did the exponent thing or how we know how to divide. That could be a thing right there. If you don't know how to divide numbers and there's little tricks I can show you. Um, so write down this, take your time, think about it. Once you get your thoughts together, you can always leave a comment on this video. All right, so moving on. multiplication with radicals. So one of the biggest tricks with radicals is you can only multiply the outside with the outside and you can only multiply the inside with the inside. You cannot do it the other way around. And when you have um, an integer times um, I don't want to say a mixed number because it's referring to fractions and whole numbers. Um, and I, I can't even say complex because that involves, huh, I wonder what the term is. Well, if you have an integer uh, being multiplied with a uh, radicant and a coefficient, although coefficient should be with variables, I do not know the word for something that involves a, ra a radicant and an integer, huh? That's weird. <laughs> well, moving on. Basically, uh, the integers get multiplied together and the ra radicant, radicand get multiplied together. So if I did this, I'm going to do negative 6 or negative 3 times 2. That gives me that negative 6. Sorry, sometimes I blurred out the answer unintentionally. And then inside is going to be that square root of 10 times square root of 2. So we get that square root of 20. However, Looking at square root 20, we can actually break that down into 4 times 5. And 4 is a perfect square root. So what happens here is we take the square root or the prime factorization, however you want to take your square roots. Um, and we can do it the same way too, because if we think about it, 20 is 2 and 10, which is 2 and 5. We get this pair of 2s. And that 2 is going to be multiplied by the outside number. Well, this five stays inside. 
All right, so moving on. All right, so let's get into doing this. Oops, kind of snuck the answer in there. So let's say we're doing a rectangle, and this rectangle has a width of six and a length of six radical uh, three. So by our definitions, only the outside integers can be multiplied together. So we get 36, and this three stays inside by himself. So we get this 36 square root of three. Hmm. Oh, there it is. I was like, wait, where's the answer? There it is, part C. I wasn't suspecting C, I guess. All right, so there we go. And then moving on. Well, let me erase this, otherwise I'll show up on the next slide. So moving on to the next one. When we're multiplying three dimensions, we're going to multiply everything together. So notice how all the radicants, when we multiply them together, we get this 60. So that 60, we can break up into 4 and 15. If we didn't know that, we can always do 2 and 30. And the 30, so let me break that up, actually. Let's say I had this radical 60, 2, and 30 and then 2 and 15. So even though I didn't know I could have divided by 4, I can be like, whoop, there's a pair of 2s, goes outside, 15, stays inside, because even if I broke it down, 15 is just 3 and 5. And then that 2 gets multiplied with the 6 that's already outside from the how we got this 2 and the 3, and that's going to give us that 12. All right, so let me erase this thing. So I think this is the last activity we have here. So another way of thinking about this is they kind of compose this a little differently. They're like, hey, this is a three and that. So they want us to solve each labeled area. So area of one. Well, that's going to be three times five radical two. So it's going to be three times radical two. So we're going to look at 15 times radical 2, so 15 radical 2. The next one they want us to do is this 3 radical 2 times 5 radical 2. So basically the same thing, except now we have rad two radical 2s. So when I multiply this together, I get 15 from the 3 times the 5, and then square root 2 times 2, which is square root of 4 which in other words is 15 times two, which in other words is 30. So that was a bit of work on that one. So we're gonna get this 30. Now here's the tricky part. This has a radical and this does not have a radical. Um, aside from that, even if they both had radicals, they have to have the same radical to be like terms. It's kind of like when we were doing X's and Y's. You never did an X plus a y. And the reason for this was they were not like terms. Think of these uh, rad radicants as um, terms that you can't do. All right. So let me erase all that. What else do we have here? All right. So we have this other picture. And we want to multiply all this out. So uh, we want to see which one's bigger. This or this or this or that. Well, in order to do this, it's a little challenging. So we know square root of two is gonna be the smallest because it's somewhere between one and four. Square root of six is somewhere between uh, four and nine. Uh, and then square root of three is somewhere here. So here is where we have our square root of two. A little bit more than that, we have a square root of 3, but we're doubling it. So on top of square root of 2 being smaller than square root of 3, doubling it, we know that it's bigger. But how much bigger? And which and we want the smallest this way, because this is saying the alligator wants to eat the biggest number. This one's going to be the smaller number, because the alligator's going towards that instead of the smallest number. So... Merely just by knowing where these square roots are, we could have solved this. 
So even though this is times two, this is also times two. So that alone lets us know that this square root of six is the biggest number, two times square root of six. All right, let's move on. Going into here, uh, what is the volume of the rectangular prism? Um, so we're looking at this one. So if we do this, we're gonna get um, four on the outside because it's two times two. And then on the inside, six times two times three. Well, six times two is 12. And then 12 times three is 36. So on the inside, we get square root of 36. Oh, luckily for us, that's a perfect root. So we get four times six. So our answer is 24. Nothing too complicated about that. It just ends up being a perfect 24. All right, perfect. Now we're gonna see which one of these expressions is true. And it's one answer. Uh, its volume must be expressed as a product of a whole number and a square because its side because its side lengths include both. Mm, I mean, yes, but we saw that it wasn't because the square root we could do a perfect square root. Um, in its simplest form, the volume can be expressed as a square root of a whole number. That is not a perfect square. Well, that's not true because we did have it kind of mixed. Ah, notice how they even say whole number and square root. So they don't, so there is no word for whole number and square root. That's interesting. Um, its volume can be expressed as a whole number because the product of the radicants is a perfect square, right on the money. So again, the radicants means those numbers are stuck on the inside. All right. Self-evaluation, this one, I think I did pretty good. I would give myself a five. And you see, I've, I've usually been really critical on myself, but I feel this one wasn't so bad. Um, they could have made this more challenging, but I think they didn't want to discourage people. So I, I think I did pretty well on that one. I understood that the inside and the outside get multiplied um, separately and so on. And finally, we're at our summary. So just remember from what we learned in the last module that the square root um, can be written with a symbol. We're just gonna end up dividing that out. Um, and you can do this by prime factorization. And they do kind of mention that right here. So just go back and see what prime factorization is. It'll help you out for your mastery test. And as always, I do recommend uh, going into this little folder right here and printing out the guided notes. Studying that, if you need a study guide, this is the best place to get one, is printing out these guided notes and completing them yourself. Um, other than that, guys, I will see you next week on the next video. Um, hopefully, I'll film it a little earlier. Um, the day off and a lot of touring appointments had me film this a little later than I would have wanted. Um, so see you guys next week for module, if the last one I recorded was module two, this is module three, so I'll see you for module four.